Um, sorry for that. Um, my name is Thuy and I am a postdoc um, in vaccine and infectious disease um, organization in universities of Saskatchewan. And um, um, the topic of my presentation today is uh, in overall characterizations of innate immune stimulants for control of yolk set infection in young kids. Um, yolk set infection is uh, the inflammation and congestion of yolk sets um, as shown in this figure, and it's caused by even pathogenic E. coli. And this disease can cause up to 1.3% mortality per week during, during the first two weeks. And the survival bud after the infection with the leaky navel like this um, may have a lower weight gain as well as more susceptible with other infection. And for controls of this disease, we or other bacteria infection, the antibiotic uh, usually used in different routes, such as in ovo injection or add to the feet or water, uh, as grow motor or use via uh, oral garbage. Uh, however, the antibiotic residues uh, cause many drawbacks and uh, as well as to the increasing of the um, the antibiotic resistance organism or the public health concerns or uh, to the environmental hazards. Um, that's the reason why is that now like more efforts were put on to development or discover uh, the alternative uh, approaches to the antibiotics for controls of this uh, infection. And in this study, we are focusing on the innate immune stimulant to control uh, the uh, yolk set infection caused by E. coli. And uh, we are um, using the CBC poly IC or avian antimicrobial peptides uh, and inject these. Um, well, inject these innate immune stimulant via in oval root um, as the day eating of the embry embryonic eggs uh, target to the amniotic uh, fluid of and then here are some uh, results we have obtained so far first of all we identify uh, around 90 percent of isolate from the infected bird in the field case is uh, e coli and other bacteria species also can be found in the, in the disease sample such as salmonella proteus pseudomonas or micrococci and most of isolates was close relation, have close relationship with the strain APET317 and APET2593. So in the further experiment, we use the APET317 for our challenge study. In the um, challenge model, we uh, use um, the navel root at, uh, it is the natural weight for the infection uh, of yolk cells. Um, so we uh, used three different doses from uh, 25 CFU per bird to 2,500 CFU per bird at the one day old um, stage. And at the lowest dose, uh, 25 CFU per bird, it can cause around 70% uh, mortality um, after six days of challenge. So we use this uh, challenge dose uh, for our further studies. And first of all, we have to characterize the optimal dosage levels of some innate immune stimulants, uh, such as CBG poly IC or even beta defensing and uh, CBG uh, poly uh, With the CBG, um, we're using different doses from 1 to 50 micrograms. The dose is of around 10 micrograms, so the highest protection with around 80% of our survival rate. Uh, for the poly IC, we use three different doses from 5 to 10 micrograms, and the dose of uh, 20 micrograms, so high protection. And even beta defensing in this department, we use one dose, and it's also so high protection. Uh, however, for polyphosphorzine, it showed a negative effect at um, the survival rate was lower than the con control group. In the, um, we used VBS as the control group in our experiment. And then we tried to combine these innate immune stimulants to see the combination effect. And we found that uh, the combination of CBC 10 microgram with the poly IC 15 microgram 
uh, so highest protection and followed by uh, the combination of 20 microgram CBG and polyphosphorzine or three innate immunostimulants CBG 20 microgram, poly IC 10 and polyphosphorzine 10. Uh, and this experiment was observed for seven days to nine days after challenge. So we would like to know, like, uh, to would like to prolong the protection by choose some potential for, potential formulation, such as CBG 30 microgram or the combination of CBG and pre IC uh, 15 microgram each. And th in, in this experiment, we uh, give two dose. Uh, the um, one is in ovo, and the second dose is via subcutaneous throat. And um, we found that with the second dose, it can enhance the protection of CBG and poly IC combination. As you can see here, the combination of CBG and poly IC uh, injected in ovo and uh, then subcutaneous throat uh, have highest protection with 100% survival rate. Uh, the, Second uh, protection, different uh, high protection is the CBG or the combination of CBG and poly IC injected in OVO. So in this experiment, we observe uh, for 14 days. And then we try to characterize more energy stimulant focusing on the even antimicrobial peptides. Based on our in vitro experiment, we choose three most potential peptides that have the highest bacterial killing effect, uh, calicidin 1, 2, and avian beta defen 1. And one have peptide avian beta defen 2 has the low, low, lowest antimicrobial uh, um, effect. Uh, and we do the experiment with the CBG group as the control. And we found that um, the avian beta defense ones have the compatible protective effect with the CBG um, follow, following 14 days of challenge. However, the mechanism of action of uh, CBG and peptides may be different. As we can see here, um, the CBG injected bird um, Sorry, I cannot, okay. CBG injected bird, uh, so like significant uh, higher expression of some chemokine gene, such as interleukin-8, MCV3, or pro-inflammatory cytokine, such as interferon gamma or interleukin-1 beta at different time, time point. Uh, Meanwhile, no difference were found in the peptide injected bird. And uh, just only one significant difference was found in the expression of interleukin 12 in the spleen tissue uh, at 96 hour in uh, the ABD1 injected bird. Um, uh, but no difference were found in the CBG injected bird at, at this time point. Um, and then we uh, try to combine the CBG with the peptide to see um, whether it can enhance the protection uh, or not. And in this experiment, we uh, also include the combination of CBG and poly IC at the control. And the results show that the combination of CBG and poly IC still show the highest protection here. And combination with CBG and peptides, so um, not uh, significant different with the control group. And from those these experiments, we found that the administrations of these innate immune stimulants does not like did not affect uh, the hatching rate as well as the body weight gain of the day old chicks. And it's quite give quite high protection, especially for the CBG along or the combination of CBG and poly IC. So here is um, some conclusion from our study. Uh, 
first of all, the optimal dosage levels for control of yolk sac infection in ovo for CBCs is from 10 to 15 microgram per embryo. For poly IC, it's around 20 microgram. And the for the combination, the CPC and poly IC, um, 50 microgram each uh, provide higher protection than other combination. And this combination even uh, can enhance the protection when we do the second dose via subcutaneous road. And uh, the, the even beta defend one, uh, the peptide, the antimicrobial peptide, have the compatible productive effect with the CBG. However, uh, the immune-related genes expressions from the spin tissue at different time points from birth receiving CBG and peptides were different. So maybe the mechanism of action of uh, CBG and peptides may be different. So uh, that brings me to the end of my presentation today. And um, I would like to take this opportunity to present my acknowledgement to all of my supervisor, uh, Dr. Volker, Dr. Um, Dara, and uh, uh, Wolfgang, uh, who bring me this op great opportunity to join in the video team and uh, other project members, such as uh, Kule, Brenda, Michelle, Sully, and Jamie, and other animal care technician who contribute a lot in uh, this, this study. And I also thank you, thank, yeah. sorry. Thank you. We, we are uh, short in time, so.